Today we're visiting with upland game biologist RJ Gross and we're going to talk pheasants and what hunters can expect this upcoming pheasant season. I'm Mike Anderson with the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. RJ, we're in a major drought. How does that affect the pheasants? So the two things that really drive upland bird populations are weather and habitat. And obviously in a drought, both of those are gonna be affected. Um, you know, it all started kind of last fall. It was a dry fall, came and then we had a mild winter, very mild winter, no precipitation. Um, most of the time, you know, you're optimistic for that because we do have generally good overwinter survival. And we did, we saw that, you know, we had decent production last year on pheasants. It came through and crowing counts were up almost statewide, almost all statewide this year. Um, so that was good, but then Mother Nature had obviously different plans coming in. During that nesting season, you know, into brood rearing, the drought persisted and a lot of the state was actually in extreme drought and the rest of it was in severe drought, according to the National Drought Monitor. Obviously not good, you know, the biggest thing with that, the habitat. With the, with the no snow precipitation this year, there was no residual moisture, that brute, that early nesting cover didn't come up. Um, and coming in from that dry fall, a lot of it was harvested, hayed, um, grazed from last year. So the cover just wasn't there. Then, well I've said it you know 100 times before, but those first two weeks that a chick hatches, mid-June, um, the first two weeks they need exclusively insects. With no moisture, uh, the bugs just can't complete their life cycle, so there was no bugs for them right away. Um, and survivability was, was affected negatively. Um, with that though, coming into July, uh, a lot of people can remember, you know, we had a lot of uh, grasshoppers comes with drought. So hopefully, and it, it came out in the surveys that those, that second hatch, even though smaller clutch sizes, you know, not as many chicks, uh, they had food uh, to survive. So, so that's, that's some positive to come out of the drought. RJ, you just finished your late roadside summer brood counts. Uh, tell our viewers how you conduct those yep. surveys. So it's the same routes that we do as our crowing counts in the spring. They're 20 mile routes uh, in pheasant habitat and we drive 15 miles an hour. Uh, when we see an upland brood, an upland bird, we'll get out, we'll clap our hands, stop our feet, get them to flush, flush if there's any chicks. We'll count, you know, by species, if it's a rooster, uh, a hen, and then brood, brood size, how, how, how old they are. And we'll tally that and we look at three metrics when we're looking at the pheasant population. We're looking at pheasants per 100 miles, broods per 100 miles, and average brood size. RJ, with the drought, the, the uh, ditches were hayed like you mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, not a lot of dew. How does yep. that affect the surveys? Yep, the best mornings for surveys are clear, calm, and heavy dew on the grass. Uh, with no dew on the grass, you know, it's poor survey conditions. So counts varied because of that. Um, and that's, that's due to the drought. And then, like, like we talked about, a lot of the ditches were cut. Um, a lot of field, alfalfa, everything was cut. And just overall, the vegetation wasn't as high. So those pheasants didn't have to come out to dry off. Um, and, you know, they, they, they were never really wet. So, like I said, that varies counts. To the extent, we don't exactly know. Um, but but some, of it, some of the decline can be attributed to that. Okay, let's talk survey results. You guys split your pheasant management areas in four districts. Mm -hmm. Let's start with the Southwest. Yep. So the Southwest, uh, compared to last year, was down just a little bit. Um, when we're talking about pheasants per 100 miles, and that's adults and broods, and then broods per 100 miles was down just slightly. Um, but a, um, a positive there was the average brood size was up. Um, just up a little bit, but that shows that the broods that were out there um, were, were better sizes compared to last year. Um, they're still recovering, you know, the five-year average there, we're still down a little bit from there. Uh, they were hit the hardest in that 2017 year, the last time we had a drought. Um, but there were, you know, so the very far southwest seemed to do better than as you're getting towards the central part of the state. And that's simply because they had rain down there, you know, they weren't in the extreme severe drought, things like that. So as you get farther down into basically our four kind of heart counties down in the southwest, um, you should see some roosters. Okay, let's move north, northwest. Yep, northwest compared to last year was down in, in all categories, but you have to, I have to remind people that last year was such a banner year for production. You know, it was very good and, and all three of the upland birds did very well up there. Um, while everything was down, it wasn't down tremendously, just, just slightly and Kind of again, like the southwest, the very far corner, kind of above Williston, all the way up into the Crosby area, 
uh, did very well. Um, so th there are going to be young roosters to be found up there. And they had moisture as well. Yep. Yep. Okay, let's just move northeast. Yep. In the northeast, you know, it's not traditional pheasant habitat. We say it every time. Uh, most of that habitat is down south, right, right along I-94. And right along I-94 did okay this year. Um, that district was up slightly in all the metrics that we, that we track. Um, but you know, very small numbers, so it's a very small increase. The percentages were, you know, were minuscule. Um, but right along I-94, people should find some roosters. Okay, how about southeast? And the southeast uh, was hit the hardest from basically this drought. Uh, they seemed to miss just about every rain event that came through, and they were always seemed to be in the severe drought category. And uh, all three of the metrics that we, that we keep track of, that pheasants per 100, bro broods per 100, and brood size was all down. Uh, some of them in the you know 40 percent so it's not good it's going to be hard hunting around there this year okay on a statewide level yep. rj how is this season uh going to compare to last yep. season yep so statewide when you tally up all the numbers you know so those pheasants per 100 miles we're down 23 um, percent and again some of that is variable due to the no the poor survey conditions broods per 100 miles um, down 30 percent from last year but a positive is brood size was unchanged, uh, and that's statewide. And that, you know, it doesn't paint the whole picture. You know, you could say, you know, that's good that brood size was the same as last year, but some like the Northwest and the Southwest was so much higher than the, that that really brought it, you know, kind of evened it out. So there's gonna be pheasants on the landscape for, for hunters. There is, there is. And hunters, you're gonna have to be aware that a lot of the cover and habitat, you know, everything that could have been hayed and grazed uh, probably was because a lot of producers, you know, especially cattle producers, they needed that forage for their cows. Um, a lot of the habitat just didn't grow up, you know, so a lot of those places you went to, you know, the grass might have been knee high this year, it might be ankle high type of thing. RJ, on years like this, we always get the question, why don't we lower the limit? Mm -hmm. Explain that a little bit. Yep. For pheasant hunting, we shoot only roosters. Uh, hens are what drives the population, and we do not harvest any of those. Um, you know, you want a very good, a very high hen to rooster ratio. So the more roosters you take out of the population, uh, you're, you're helping. Um, you know, back in our heyday when we had a lot of pheasants on the landscape, you know, we had that five, six, seven hens per rooster. And you know, lately we, we've been running two or three. Really the only thing that lowering the limit would do was spread out opportunity to, to, to other hunters. Okay, any regulation changes for this season? As far as limits, nothing, but uh, North Dakota now has electronic posting so before you come out, before you plan your hunt, you know, pull up the computer, look at areas you want to go, and then also we have maps available on our phones that'll tell you lands that are electronically posted. RJ, what advice do you have for hunters this fall? Mm -hmm. Again, you know, temper your expectations. Um, the habitat is, it's going to be limited. You know, you're going to have to scout, find places. But I think when you find good pheasant habitat, you're going to find pheasants. And pheasants are out there. Um, and then also, you know, it may not look like it right now, but it is it is dry out there. It's still dry. You know, pay attention to your daily uh, fire indexes and, um, you know, check ndresponse.gov. A lot of great information, RJ. Thank you. Thank you.